Hi, this is Jason, Chief Technical Analyst with Toro Alerts with your weekly market update. We saw some nice upside movements in the SPY to start the week off before we saw a rollover uh, on Wednesday and a pretty good sell off Thursday. But then Friday, we did see some uh, selling into the morning, but a nice uh, reversal going into the close on Friday. Ended up with a nice hammer candlestick, uh, which typically indicates a short term bottom in the markets. And also, if we're trying to look at this from an LA wave perspective, this could be a uh, wave four correction with a uh, wave five to the upside. It would actually get us back up to the all-time highs in the 480, 485 range on the SPY. And so that's what I'm looking for in the short term. Uh, as long as we're still above this uh, close on Friday, uh, that'll kind of be my uh, expectations uh, for some more upside opportunities in the broader markets. Similar story over on the NASDAQ, the triple Qs. Uh, we're also just above key Fibonacci level, which is around 354. So as long as we're above that 354 level, uh, I'll be looking for more upside uh, momentum in the NASDAQ going into next week. And same story on the Dow Jones Industrial Averages. Uh, we're uh, just above some key volume support. Also had a nice hammered candle close into Friday. And uh, we will see some more upside there as well. And uh, could see that also getting back up to our all-time highs, which is also a key Fibonacci level at the 366.50 on the DIA Dow Industrial Averages. Jumping over the Dow Jones Transportation Average Index. Got a nice bullish momentum uh, movement out of that over uh, two weeks ago. Then we kind of had a nice uh, uh, pause there and a, and a bit of a uh, hold above some uh, support at the 15,960 level. But then this last week that reversed pretty hard and sold off back down. Now we are still above the 50 week moving average, but it looks like we are backing it down into this range. And so, until we can kind of break out of this uh, bit of a choppy action range which we've been sitting in in the transports really since May of last year. Um, kind of looking at probably some more sideways movement in the transportation averages. And then when we jump over to the relative rotation graph, take a look at our major industry sectors as well as some of the metals and miners, gold and silver. Um, we've seen some of the biggest movement in the metals and mining and the utility space. Those have been our strongest sectors. Uh, we've also seen a nice rebound in real estate in the last couple of weeks with some nice upside momentum there, even though it's still in the lagging quadrant. And uh, obviously energy is still continuing to outperform, although we did see oil come off a bit this week. And our sectors that are hanging out in the leading quadrant right now are consumer, consumer discretionary, materials, and the technology sector. And when we take a look at this, uh, that's all of our major industry groups here. Uh, we can kind of see it's a nice snapshot of the last couple of months on each of our major industry groups so we can see which ones and are really underperforming and which ones uh, are outperforming as well. And so you can kind of see real estate, you can see that nice rebound recently and it's a bit of a bullish flag right there. So that could have some nice upside momentum if that breaks up further. Uh, healthcare started to really take off nice and utilities has outperformed. Uh, consumer staples, some of those defensive sectors are starting to outperform, so that might be a bit of a signal if we continue to see strength out of those sectors. Uh, and then um, some of the really weakest sectors we've seen uh, recently, I would say, would be financials and uh, communication services have both been uh, some of the weakest performers recently. And then when we take a look at the utilities, we also saw a really interesting development just in the last uh, week or so, uh, where we were at previous all-time highs back in February uh, 2020, right before the crash. We got back up above these levels, tested it a couple of times, it failed. Now we got back above them pretty strongly. And so that looks like a pretty solid breakout in the utility sector. And so if we're um, trying to find some upside price target on that, uh, we do a Fibonacci retracement level, and that gives us about 88.25 or so. Uh, on the XLU for some nice upside opportunities in the utility sector going forward. And then when we take a look at the broader markets, the Russell 3000, we've been watching this one close as, as we broke down uh, in the first quarter this year. Uh, a couple weeks ago we saw it uh, break that trend line and then also get back above the 50 week moving average, which is a bull bullish signal. And then this week we did see it pull back a bit, um, but it's nice to see that it did hold that 50 week moving average. So as long as we're still hanging out above that period, uh, 50 week moving average, uh, that would be a pretty bullish signal for the broader markets. And when we're looking at the value line ge geometric index, that's about 1,700 stocks in the New York Stock Exchange, also hanging out above a key support level uh, for the last couple weeks. And so as long as we are above this 630, 70-ish, we'll call it, on the BE, uh, the value line gen gen genomic in index, that looks pretty um, pretty solid for some potential upside uh, opportunities in the broader markets as well. 
And then we're looking at the VEU, which is our all world minus the US. So we're taking a look at essentially the stocks abroad outside, except for the US. We're still hanging out about below a key level. Uh, I'd really like to see that get above that 59 level before I get uh, bullish on this uh, ETF. Uh, but there are some opportunities in, in the uh, emerging markets and in some of the other countries uh, that are actually outperforming pretty well. We've seen some nice movement uh, in countries like Brazil, Peru, um, Argentina, um, most, a lot of the South, South American countries. We've also seen some good uh, performance in, uh, out of uh, South Africa. And so there are some pockets in, in certain countries that have done well. They typically are the ones that have uh, energy production, commodities uh, production, and things of that nature. And we're, we're seeing some strong outperformance out of those countries. Uh, but broadly, uh, taking a look at the whole world versus the U.S., uh, it's really uh, looking like the U.S. is still uh, outperforming the broader markets outside of this country. And when we take a look at the large caps, uh, similar to the Russell 3000, we got above uh, the 50 week moving average here uh, two weeks ago, and then we did hold that, although we did see a bit of a pullback this week towards the end of the week. Uh, but again, as long as we're staying above that uh, moving average, then that looks, looks pretty bullish for our large caps. And then we're jumping over to the small caps, the Russell 2000. Uh, we actually had some nice uh, support at this key level that's really been established all the way back since the end of 2021, which was the 204.50 level. Uh, we came down off of that uh, and hit that support two weeks ago, and then we pushed back up off of it this week. So that's a pretty bullish signal, and especially if we can get above this 209 level and get back up into this range here, uh, I think that would actually look pretty uh, interesting for some upside opportunity in the small caps. But I'd probably really want to see it break that 209 level before I got too excited on uh, some big movements out of small caps. But. And then when we jump over to our uh, growth versus value, um, that's been a value over growth really since November of last year, but over the last uh, about three weeks now, we've seen growth start to outperform a bit. So, and we also got above a key uh, support resistance level of that 1.66. So if we can hold that and we see some more upside momentum here, then that'll tell us that uh, growth is actually uh, having a nice little rebound in the short term at least. And then we take a look at the uh, U.S. oil market, uh, we had a big sell off this last week. Uh, prices have been really volatile over the last month, obviously. Uh, start, started with the Russian uh, Ukraine invasion. And so we've seen some really crazy price action in oil, anything uh, as low as $91 a barrel, and then we peaked out a few weeks back at almost $130. Well, we closed the week out right around $100, just under $100 a barrel. Um, so that's uh, kind of surprising. I kind of thought we'd stay above the $100 level, uh, but we're just at that uh, level. We're not too much further off, and so um, I would expect the you know, privacy oil prices uh, continue to the upside, uh, but we might actually see a bit of a uh, consolidation or correction in this area. Uh, there have been talks about the U.S. working on some uh, negotiations with releasing further oil reserves with other countries, and that might be uh, put, putting some downside pressure on the oil prices in the short term. But I think long term we're still in a secular bull market around oil, and so like ener the energy space and uh, the commodity prices going forward. And uh, while we saw oil sell off, commodities was a similar story this week. Uh, previous week we had a big move to the upside and that's pretty much reversed entirely this week. And so we might also be seeing a similar situation out of commodities where it might end up just uh, chopping around in a range for a bit before we see further upside momentum in the commodity space. And when we're looking at the high yield corporate bond ETFs, um, we just about got to this uh, key support resistance level at 82.50, um, but it rejected that pretty strong on the weekly candlestick and fell back down. Uh, if we can get back up above that level, that'd be a fairly bullish signal, I think, uh, for uh, some short-term upside in stocks. Uh, but we could also just kind of chop around in this range as well, and, and I can still see stocks doing okay. Um, but if we get below the 79.50 level on the corporate bond, that could be a bit of a, a signal that uh, we might see some more weakness in the stock market. And similarly, when I'm looking at the ratio chart of the corporate bonds divided by traditional bonds, uh, we've been kind of chopping around in the range quite a bit. We did have a pretty big breakdown there, uh, but that was right around when everything reversed and we had a big strong couple of weeks after that. Uh, and so as long as we're still hanging out in this range and we're still above the 0.66 level, then I don't think we have any huge concerns around the market selling off aggressively in the short term. Uh, and of course, if we can get above this uh, 0.68 level and actually see a, a solid breakout, then that might be a bit of a signal that, uh, that we might even see some strong uh, upside momentum in the broader markets. And then when we're looking at our uh, consumer discretionary versus consumer staples, uh, we've seen it kind of chopping around over the last few weeks, and so there's not any real strong signals out of this right now. 
Uh, if we were to break down below this uh, 0.78 level, that would tell us that uh, people are getting a bit more defensive and buying more of those utilities and uh, healthcare and consumer staple sector. But right now, it's been fairly choppy the last few weeks. And when we've been looking at the Australian dollar, Japanese yen, uh, the Australian dollar is a risk on currency, whereas the Japanese yen is typically a defensive currency. And so when we see this ratio chart break out to the upside, typically is a good signal that uh, risk assets uh, are a good place to be. And uh, a lot of times crypto does well when we see this uh, chart outperform as well as uh, traditional stocks as well. And so we've seen a really strong move out of the Aussie dollar, Japanese yen over the last few weeks. And it did kind of hang out and pause over the last couple of weeks, so we should see if this is a rollover from here or if it's just a bit of a pause before we move further to the upside. And so we'll be watching that closely over the next couple of weeks to see which direction it goes from here. And the dollar's kind of been chopping around. Taking a look at our DXY chart, um, we're just above some key support at 97.75, and we've held that nicely for the last couple of weeks. Looking like a bit of a bull flag here, so I think once we get a breakout to the upside, uh, we'll likely see 100 to 103 to almost 104 on the DXY. Uh, it's very likely, I think, in the short term once we break out of this bull flag. And as we jump over to like gold and silver, the GLD chart, uh, kind of hanging out. These are weekly candlesticks. So the last three weeks, we've just kind of been chopping out the range. It looked like we had a bit of a short-term top about a month ago, and uh, so. But as long as we're hanging out about the 175, 174.50 level, I think we're still looking uh, pretty strong uh, for gold in the long term. And once we can get break re break out again above the 186 level, then I think that's a, a great opportunity for uh, to go long on gold again if you're if you're not. And with silver, still waiting on this. It's been a frustrating one. Um, it's kind of been chopping around in this 22 to 24 range. Really want to see it get above this 24, 24, 50 level and to see a solid breakout, and especially if we can get up to above the 26, 27 dollar range, uh, then we could really see a sustained breakout in silver. And at some point, I still think there's some real opportunities for you know, 30, 40 dollar silver, if not more. Um, but uh, for now, we are still kind of hanging out, trading out in the range here. And so we want to wait for it to get out of that before we get too excited about silver going forward. And when we jump over to the put call ratio, uh, people have definitely got a little more defensive over the last couple of weeks. Anytime we finish above the one ratio, that means people are buying uh, some puts as defense in the market. And so uh, people are being a, a bit cautious still in the markets. However, when we jump over to the VIX, we're below 20 and we closed the week below 20 and so that was an interesting development we really haven't uh, been below 20 in, in quite some time as you can see we had quite a few weeks uh, of uh, pretty elevated VIX levels well above 35 at a time in a few days uh, quite a few days above 30 and so to be below 20 again uh, you really don't shouldn't expect any massive moves in the market so the VIX is hanging out below 20 and so uh, if uh, we start to see some of those ratio, ratio charts that we watch break down and we see the mix, uh, see a big spike in, in, uh, in elevated to the upside, then that could be a signal that the markets are rolling a little bit. Since we're not seeing that right now, I still think there's some uh, upside opportunity in the short term for our markets. So let's go ahead and uh, wrap this thing up with our uh, corporate bonds and see where interest rates are hanging out at. Our two year uh, ended up at about uh, almost 2.5% finishing off the week. The 10 year uh, hanging out at about 2.4% uh, on the week. And then our 30 year is hanging out uh, also at right about 2.45 on the week. And then uh, obviously this week there's been a lot of conversation around the yield curve. And we did have an inversion this week. And so uh, obviously there's been a lot of people discussing that. Uh, I went ahead and looked back at previous um, yield curve inversions and actually looked at three of the strongest ones. And those were actually where the ratio got below the negative 0.22% level. And in all three of those cases, which we're not there yet on this one, but in all three of those cases, you can see that we had a 20% correction back in the late 80s. We had a 50 plus percent correction in the dot-com bubble. And we had about a 50% correction back in the uh, financial crisis. And so uh, in all those cases, we were uh, at that negative 0.22 level or worse. And so we're not quite at that level yet, but if we do hit that level, that might be even a stronger indication that uh, a stronger correction could be coming. But I think one of the biggest things that a lot of people miss uh, when it comes to yield curve inversion is, while it's a pretty uh, accurate predictor of uh, possible correction or a future recession, uh, it's really not, uh, there is no history that tells us any kind of timeline on that. We've had other, some cases where we've seen the market top within a matter of uh, four to eight, six weeks after yield curve inversion, and we've also seen it take a year or two. And so, uh, and, tip, and historically, right after the yield curve inverts, you oftentimes see some uh, bullish momentum in stocks uh, right after the inversion. And so, 
Uh, I think that all leads to the, the likelihood that we will probably see some upside opportunity in the market still in the short term, but it's definitely time to be a little bit cautious going forward uh, and, and make sure you're not just sitting on a bunch of long positions and not watching the markets closely. And that's where Tor Alerts can really help out. So make sure you download the Tor Alerts app on the App Store, utilize the promo code, we'll get you one free month, and we'll help you navigate these volatile markets because I'm sure we're going to see some nice upside opportunities, but also some corrections uh, in this uh, 2022 volatile year. And so make sure to download that app and uh, utilize our technology to help you navigate these volatile markets. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.